Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take lesson 2 from class 11 textbook for English titled Hornbill and the name of the lesson is We are not afraid to die if we can all be together. Let us recapitulate the story. You must have read the story by now. This is a story of valor, forbearance, faith, optimism and persistence. The courage of the strong-willed children is especially noteworthy in the story. It would not be easy to face such a grave danger. The Cook family and their sailor friends fought the waves with their collective strength and optimism. Now, can you describe the mental condition of the voyagers on 4th and 5th January? I hope you have read the story. What was their mental condition on 4th and 5th January? On 4th January, the voyagers felt relieved after 36 hours of continuous pumping out water. They had their first meal in almost two days but their respite was short-lived. They faced dangerous situations on January 5th. Fear of death loomed large. They were under great mental stress. This is clear to you. We are recapitulating the story. We are discussing comprehension questions. Now, the next one. What difference did you notice between the reaction of the adults and the children when they faced with danger. Was there any difference? Yes, of course. There was a lot of difference. The adults took it as a challenge. But with great hope, they were fighting the waves. They were struggling to keep the water out of the ship. But children, they were looking at everything. They were also optimistic. But they said that if we are going to die, we are happy that all of us will die together. So that feeling of togetherness was there with them, that they are together in the face of adversity also. How does the story suggest that optimism helps to endure the most dire stress? Does the story suggest this? That when you are optimistic, things work out for you. Do they or, they or they do not? Yes, they do work out in a positive manner. They all were very optimistic. Cook, his wife, both the sailors, they were hopeful. They were optimistic that they will be able to face this weather. And they did their job very well and they saved themselves from the storm. Now the next question is, what lessons do we learn from such hazardous experiences? What lessons have we learned? When we come face to face with death, what lessons? Even if the situation is grim, what should we do? I will share my points with you. We should be courageous, we should have confidence, we should be resourceful and most importantly presence of mind. And if presence of mind is there, we can overcome disasters. There are disasters even if we are staying at home, earthquake, earthquake is one of those disasters. It can come anytime. But we have to keep the presence of mind to be able to face any disaster. Now my next question is, what are some of the adventure sports where risks are involved? I am sure you will be able to write down quite a few names. Have you written? Yes, you have written. I am going to share my list with you. I have written mountaineering, scuba diving, bungee jumping. What have you written? You can add to the list and then you can share the list with your friends 
with your teacher. Now let us look at the language that has been used in the lesson because from every lesson we learn new words and they help us develop our vocabulary. Now in this lesson there are a lot of words that are related to ship. The register of sailing has been used in this lesson. Every domain has its own register. For example, kukri has its own register. Kukri means you are cooking, you are uh, frying, you are sieving or you are washing or you are cleaning, chopping. So it has its own register. Similarly, sailing has its own register. Uh, therefore, we have come across and we have learnt many new words related to ships and sailing. A ship comprises of both visible as well as invisible parts. For example, rudder, anchor, bow, keel, cabin, propeller, mast. These are visible parts. Can you find out the invisible parts from a thesaurus? or you can refer to a dictionary or you can go to the internet and find out the words and complete the list. So these are some of the words that are related to ship. In this lesson, we have come across words like gale and storm. Here are two more words for stone related to the sea, typhoon, cyclone, how many words does your language have for storm? So please write it down. You are all from different parts of the country. So you can write it in your language. Now my next activity is, I will read out the question for you and then we will discuss it. The following words used in the text as ship terminology. These words which are there are used as ship terminology are also commonly used in another sense. In what context would you use the other meaning? Let us take the example of not. We had discussed what does a not mean. Now here we don't have to use the word in terms of ship. But if we, but can we use the word in some other way? In another sense, yes, open the knot. This knot is very strong. We can say not in a string, not in a rope, not of hair, not in wood, not group of people, not of muscles. Similarly, there is another word stern, stern voice. It can also be used in terms of opposition. Then boom, boom means a loud sound or boom in the economy. Then anchor. Anchor, ship's anchor, anchor your TV anchor. Now we are going to talk about compound words. The following three compound words end in ship. Can you add to the list? I have added one over here. Airship, flagship, lightship, spaceship. So by adding the word ship, we have made a compound word and they have different meanings. This is how you enhance your vocabulary. Ownership, steamship, upmanship. So can you find out more words? I am sure you will be able to find out more words and then you can share these words with your friends. You can use them in sentences of your own to find out the usage. Now I am going to talk about phrasal verbs. The following are the meanings listed in the dictionary against the phrase take on. In which meaning is it used in the third paragraph? I want you to go back to your story, the chapter, third paragraph. Take on something to begin to have a particular quality. Take on something. By adding the preposition on, we have made a phrasal verb which means to begin to have a particular 
quality or appearance or to assume something. Now take somebody on. Now take somebody on to employ somebody, to engage somebody. This is how we create meaning. To accept somebody as one's opponent in a game, contest or conflict. Now take somebody or something on to decide to do something, to allow something or somebody to enter. For example, a bus, plane or ship to take something or somebody on board. Now you can create more phrasal verbs. Let us take the word get. Can you make new words with the word get by adding prepositions? I will share mine with you. Get on, get along, get away. Let us take the word break, break out, break in. You can take any verb and add a preposition. You will find a new phrasal verb and you can use it while writing or while speaking. That will enhance your vocabulary. Now I have project work for you which is very important. You should do this. The task is collect at least five poems about sailing or adventure journeys. Now you have to find out these on your own. I will give you hints so that it becomes little easy for you. Then write a short summary of each and put them in your portfolio. So it is a writing come project work. First you have to find, you have to do some research, then you have to write a short summary of every uh, story or poem that you have collected and then you will put it in your portfolio. The author also writes water, water everywhere. Did you notice? It is on page 14, last para. Water, water everywhere. Can you recollect that these words have been used by Coleridge also? Famous poet. He has used these words in his poem, The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Water, water everywhere, and all the boats did shrink. Water, water everywhere, nor any drop to drink. So, I have given you a hint of a poem where water, sailing, ships is used. I will give you another hint. A poem by Alfred Lord Tennyson. The name of the poem is Ulysses. I will read a few lines from the poem for you. It's not too late to seek a newer world. Push off and sitting well in order smite the sounding furrows for my purpose holds to sail beyond the sunset and the baths of all the western stars until I die. So these are the two hints I have given you. You can either find out the poems or you can take a story. But you have to collect five things, poems or stories. Now read them, write their summary. Now I will share the steps of process approach to writing. Whenever you write anything, whether it is a summary or a letter or a paragraph, you have to follow this approach. Process approach has five steps or you can say five to six steps. The first step is brainstorming or doing your research. Here you are not brainstorming you are doing the research. You are looking for the poems, you are looking for the stories, you are reading them, you are making notes and then you are writing the summary. So you are making notes. So do your research, find out the poems, read them and make your notes. So that is the first step. The second step is writing the very act. So in this you have to write a summary. So summary is nothing but a paragraph. You might give 
a few examples in quotation marks from the poem or from the adventure story. I leave it to you. If you give exact words from the poem or from the story, it looks good. You can give, but summary should be in your words. So start writing the summary. So have you written the summary? Yes. The third step is reviewing and revising. This is an important step. Reviewing. Now you review your own work. Are you happy with the summary? Read it. Do you want to change the paragraphs? Do you want to change the sentences? Or you want to change the words here and there? Yes, you can do that. Reviewing means this only. You are analyzing your own work. You are assessing your own work. This is known as self-assessment. Or you can give your summary to your friends. You can form a group. You can share each other's work. This, is, this would involve peer assessment. When they are reading your work, they will give you ideas. You can present the summary in this manner. You can start it with a quotation or you can end with a quotation or you can give the quotation in the middle. I leave it to you, but you can discuss it with your friends. So you have reviewed it, then you revise it. So whatever you have discussed, now it is your time to revise it. You have changed the sentences, you have changed the paragraphs. You revise it. This is your third step. Your fourth step is editing. You need to edit your own work. Editing means you look at the punctuation marks. You look at paragraphs, the way they have been presented, the topic sentence. Now punctuation marks are very important because they can either make the meaning or they can mar the meaning. Appropriate punctuation marks are very important. For example, sign of exclamation. Where do you put it? When there is surprise, you are happy, excited or something sad. So you have to use appropriate punctuation marks. You do the editing. Look at the capital letters, full stops, comma, semicolons, right? make it appropriate. Now your last in the final step is rewriting. You have reviewed it, you have revised it, you have edited it. Now write your final draft and put it in your portfolio. So we are going to read your five summaries. Two hints I have already given. I would want you to read the rhyme of the ancient mariner as well as Ulysses. Three you can choose on your own and if you want to choose five on your own then I leave it to you. You can do that. So this is how your project work will be done and you can submit your project work to the teacher or to us. Even we would like to read it. Now let us look at the next question. Now next question is art and language. Draw or paint a picture of a yacht. You can refer to your textbook or look up a reference online. I leave it to you. You have to draw it on your own. Because when you draw it on your own, you will be able to understand it better. Label the parts of the yacht. You can use the terms given in the text such as bow, cabin, rudder, cockpit, stern, boom, mainsail, mast, okay? Will you be able to make the drawing? Yes, I am sure you will be able to draw it, label it and put it in your portfolio. Now there is another activity for you. If you look up the eel of Amsterdam, online you will be able to view its images. Eel means island. Eel is a French word. You will also be able to collate more information about the island such as its location in the South Indian Ocean, between the southernmost parts of Australia and South Africa, the latitude and longitude 3792S, 
7767E. Its population is 35 people, but in the story it is mentioned 28. So, the population has increased and they are meteorological station staff. Its land area is square 86 kilometers, a very small island. Now, why do not you locate Eel Amsterdam on the world map and find out which country it is a part of? You can also show it to your family and tell them about this story which proves that life can be more exciting than make-believe stories or life can be more exciting than fiction itself. So, there is another task for you. Now, we are going across the curriculum. You are looking at the island from a geographical point of view and writing about it in English. That is what we do. You can put this activity also in your portfolio. With this, we have come to the end of this session. Go through your lesson once again and do these activities. I am sure you will enjoy doing these activities. Happy learning. Thank you.